What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you'd like to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Laplace. I don't think we need to fight anymore if you guys let that girl go back, do we? <laughs> that seems unlikely to me. See? There's a brawl going on over there right now. I can't simply leave here. The man was ready. Laplace took a fighting position since he had no other choice. Alright, if you want. But who exactly are you? That would be really useful if he told him. Me? Yes, it's understandable that you don't know. My name is Feldway, and I am ranked 10th in the Empire as the man who supports Imperial history. Feldway was permanently stationed within the Empire, anticipated to serve as a placeholder in the unusual event that one of the single digits failed. Laplace had heard of him, but this was their first encounter. Oh, you are? The man they call Space, right? I'm not a man. I'm also not a woman, for that matter. Ah, that sounds complicated. Laplace kept an eye on Feldway as they talked. He appeared to be in his element, unconcerned. He didn't appear to be prepared for a fight, but he also didn't appear to be prepared to flee. He was difficult to understand. Leave this to me. Vega responded impatiently. I'm going to crush that jerk with my bare hands. Laplace abruptly halted him as he was about to take a stride forward. Whoa, hold on. Didn't I warn you not to get ahead of me? We can't take any risks while the director is being held captive. Footman and Tyr were still alive and well, fighting hard against the masses. It's difficult to say how they'd be affected if they were called away. Laplace was cautiously exploring the other side when he was interrupted by an unexpected guest. Vega, please assist me here. Laplace is a liar. We need to take care of him right now. As soon as he perceived a deadly rage, Laplace ran away. The voice he heard belonged to Yuki Kagurazaka, his former boss, but what he heard wasn't precisely what Laplace wanted to hear. Get over it, boss. It's just not like you to be controlled by someone else like this. Yuki had established Maribel's mental dominance and lived to tell the tale. He should have been able to withstand any form of mind control with his mental strength. However, Laplace's pleading was ignored. So Yuki charged at Laplace, not hesitating in his actions. When Vega noticed this, he smiled his cheerful, distorted smile. Are you serious, boss? Is it okay if I eat him once you get rid of him? Of course. I support whatever makes you stronger. Thank you, boss. I'm so thrilled you get it. That was Vega's philosophy. Always go with the stronger option. In his mind, there was no sense of ethics or morals. He preferred to live more instinctively, like a wild animal. As a result, he joyously launched his attack on Laplace, oblivious to the fact that he was doing anything wrong. Laplace could have dealt with it if it had been just him or Yuki, both at the same time? Even for him, that was a lot to ask. I don't like this at all. I was attempting to save the chairman, and now I'm on the verge of being killed. Better get out of here. Laplace was entirely correct in terms of strategy, but that was never going to happen. <laughs> don't even bother trying to flee. Isn't your name Laplace? You are equally as cautious and sly. We should probably let you die here since you're too dangerous to let go. Laplace's attempt to teleport was unsuccessful just as Feldway warned. He'd been watching everything up to this point, but now he'd cast Dominate Space over the fighting zone, preventing Laplace from fleeing. Damn you. Vega unleashed a barrage of spirit blasts, perfectly timed to coincide with Yuki's powerful kick attack. Vega launched a flurry of energy bombs in time with Yuki's furious kick. Vega may be a muscle head, but he had a keen sense of battle. Laplace had little hope of winning because the exit was blocked. No, there was no chance as long as Yuki was around. Is this the end of my life? Nonetheless, Laplace was not about to give up so easily. He determined to reveal the full strength he had been hiding, hoping that Yuki's mental dominance would be broken. Die. You moron. You're the one who's going to die. Vega was approaching slowly, and he kicked at him while Yuki continued to assault. For a brief period, Vega was unable to stand up because of that. Huh, not bad. Yeah, I'm pretty strong too, boss, just not as excellent as you, you know? I know, so I'll kill you with my own hands, okay? There was a very slight discomfort. Laplace locked his gaze on Yuki's face the minute he sensed it. It was the same one he'd seen before, that left him wide open. Laplace was too preoccupied with his own thoughts to notice Yuki's fist. He cried in his heart, no, yet the pain never came. Someone intervened to stop the hit right in front of his eyes. <laughs> Sir Rimuru has scolded me severely, my dear. Do you realize this is all your fault? It was Diablo. What exactly do you mean? Laplace almost asked, but realized it wasn't the right time. Di Diablo, did you come to save me? What? Why would I? 
Well, yes, it is the reason. Was it Laplace? Yes, I'm here to save you. So, please tell Sir Rimuru that I saved you when you meet him. All right? Diablo's face changed from disgust to a light smile. That's the most suspicious smile I've ever seen. That Laplace, who was undoubtedly distrustful but had a reputation for such smiles, could see Diablo in this light was extremely astounding. It goes without saying that it was in no way flattering. Ah, all right. I'll make sure to tell Sir Rimuru how much you helped me, okay? Good. Then I'll assist you. In truth, Rimuru had just asked Diablo. What the hell are you doing here? He was just sitting back and watching Rimuru fight in the midst of this great battle. He deserved to be yelled at, and while he had the excuse of being there to defend Rimuru, Diablo didn't dare bring it up because he seemed to have entirely forgotten about that order. Actually, Rimuru had just demonstrated once more that he was the only person in the entire world capable of dealing with someone as self-centered as Diablo. So Diablo was instructed to go to work, and as Moss gave him his report, he hurried immediately over here. Not to save Laplace, but to wipe out everyone who looked suspicious down here. <laughs> Fortunately, I was able to make this man owe me a favor. Now I'll clear my name in Sir Rimuru's eyes. Diablo was already presuming he had won. All right, Yuki is one of our allies, so I'll let him off the hook, but... Hmm? Is this a mysterious lord standing before me? I know you've had this world as your goal for quite some time, but... Hmm. You've teamed up with Rudra? Diablo's gaze was drawn to Feldway, who was wearing a faint smile. It vanished as he glared and assessed Diablo. Are you noir, by the way? I now see that Kondo's claim that a primal was working for Ramur the Demon Lord was accurate all along. I've been given the name Diablo. And regardless of what you choose to do, if you go in the path of Sir Rimuru, I won't spare you. If you want to annoy me, I recommend that you come well prepared. How thoughtful of you. You cursed demon, you're always getting in the way. Feldway's loathing for Diablo was palpable. A normal person would have been instantly killed by his murderous intent alone. Diablo, on the other hand, remained unaffected, and he smirked at Feldway as if to provoke him. Well, never mind. Even if I were to fight you here, I would have no chance. You may rest assured. There will be no way to win. Feldway spoke first, after a brief exchange of stares. I think I'll call it a day. Be prepared, Diablo, if you ever try to interfere with me again. Hmm. So I'll excuse you for remembering my name. Keep in mind, though, that I am making plans to kill you. They exchanged another look after those remarks. Then, as if they had nothing else to do, they strolled on, oblivious to one another's presence. Feldway issued Kigali and Yuki commands. I'm concerned about his majesty. We're heading back to the flagship, so get ready right away. Yuki relaxed his fighting stance as he watched everything unfold. Vega stood up unsteadily and followed Yuki over to Kigali. Footman and Tyr were summoned as well, and everyone, including the newborn walking dead, was teleported away via Feldway's dominate space. Diablo stayed behind, speaking with Moss. Now that he understood their enemy was a mystic lord, he believed he was the only one who could combat him. So, as hesitant as he was, he vowed to clear up this mess. The struggle on the ground ended with Footman and Tyr fleeing. He made sure everyone was safe before tending to the injured as needed. Diablo decided his task was done after that because Moss was both capable and connected to Benamaru. He teleported himself to the flagship after Feldway and the others had left. Meanwhile, Laplace was left alone. Great, I've been left behind yet again. He said, shrugging. Volume 15 Epilogue, Brother and Sister, Part 1 I felt better after eating, Velgrind. I took a look around the battleground now that I had some free time. The Jura forest had been severely devastated, but Rimuru, the main city, had evaded annihilation. The city's perimeter had been cleared, and some damage had been done, but Geld and his men appeared to have kept it safe. I was relieved. So, why are you still here? Isn't it fine, Sir Rimuru? In fact, I'm here to ensure Sir Rimuru is not obstructed by anyone. He had been observing me the entire time I was battling against Velgrind, I had realized. However, I didn't have the time to pay attention at the moment, despite the fact that it was unpleasant. And now we find ourselves in the present. It was only natural for me to grumble. Come on, everyone else is putting in the effort, so you should go do your job. Oh, I, I understand. Diablo walked away after looking at me with sad eyes. I really don't understand how this person thinks. He must have been observing the combat in the pretext of protecting Sir Rimuru, and preventing any outsider interventions, to be honest, it was unnecessary. Even Seal seems to be sick of Diablo, her words were harsher than ever. In any event, I could now return to dealing with Velgrind. However, I chose to delegate all of the explanation and persuading to Veldora. 
As I listened, I discovered that Veldora was blaming me for everything. Oh my goodness, why do I always have to deal with these troublesome kids? I was irritated. This guy seemed to be attempting to paint me as the villain in order to deflect Velgrin's rage. This is why I so wanted to contact my sister and let her know I was fine, but Rimuru wouldn't let me. You'll understand what I'm saying now that you're in the same situation, won't you? He sold me out instantly. He's the spoilt brat who blames his buddies when he doesn't want anyone to be unhappy with him. Allowing Veldora to do the convincing was a mistake. But he had a valid point. I could see how it would be awkward for him to appear out of nowhere in front of his sister, who was furious because she thought he was dead. That's understandable, but what's the point of blaming me? Isn't that only adding to my problems? He was supposed to assist in the mediation process, not make things worse for me. This isn't looking good. I can no longer leave Veldora in charge. I had to explain that Velgrin's current situation was identical to Veldora's. But first, I have a report to make. What exactly is it? After analyzing Velgrind, I determined that she was being controlled by someone, possibly Rudra. If you like, I can eliminate that effect. How would you like to proceed? Wow, what a shocking statement. I'm not sure what to say in response to that report. I expected Seal to perform the analyze and assess on Velgrind, so I wasn't startled, but I couldn't keep quiet after learning that Velgrind had been controlled. Was Rudra, by the way, the true perpetrator? Almost certain. Furthermore, I witnessed the combat between Carrera and Titsaya Kondu via the Soul Corridor, and it appears that Kondu was also controlled by Rudra. I believe this is a comparable situation. When I requested for more information, I was told that Granite, the guy Benamaru was battling, had given him those answers. That guy was a moron. I believe it was vital to set a good example for everyone to follow. That being said, it was a problem that would have to be resolved once I went home. The present issue was what to do with Velgrind. Veldora has proven to be untrustworthy. That's why I was going to explain everything to her, but if Rudra's mental control is affecting her, she might not listen to me. So, what should we do now? Since we went to the trouble, why not place Velgrind in the same situation as Voldora? Huh? Does this mean you can use Soul Corridor to connect me to Velgrind and convert her into an ultimate skill like Veldora? Is that even conceivable? No worries. The current Sir Ramuru is on par with or better than the true dragon race in terms of magicules. It is feasible to take in Velgrind. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. A big thanks to the Anime Kohai patrons who made this video possible. Ruben, Luis Cairo, Yuki Iki, Pedro Robles, Chris Jr., Isaac, Koala King 93, Paul DeGrassi, Little 95, Havox, Speed Saber, James Waters, Dijo, Moz Chodery. Thank you so much for helping out. I'll see you guys in the next video.